Probably one of the most difficult shots for the average player, other than trying to drive the ball 300 yards, is the long bunker shot with a high lip. It's a difficult shot, but don't be embarrassed. It gives the best of players trouble. What you want to do is plant yourself firmly in the sand. Put your hands ahead. What you want to do now is slip the club under the ball. You want the sand and the club to carry the ball out. Don't help it and don't dig. Hands ahead, open the blade, and a long follow through. Remember, the longer the shot, the longer the follow through. Sometimes you'll find yourself in a situation like this. The ball is in the bunker, the ball is below your feet, and you have to stand outside the bunker. Most people make the mistake of bending to get down to the ball, causing you to hit it fat or even skull the ball. The way it should be played is take a wide stance, grip the club at the very end because the ball is below your feet, and then flex to meet the ball. Don't bend. It doesn't require much body, but you swing the club head with the arms and the shoulders. Flex to meet the ball. It takes practice, but you've got to practice it because someday you'll definitely have to use it. You won't find yourself with a lie like this very often, but when you get in a situation like this, it's nice to know how to play it. It's not that difficult to play. But some of the common faults are you play the ball too far forward. You try to get wristy and flick it up. That's too difficult. Here's how you play it. You put the ball back in your stance. You take a pitching wedge or a sand wedge. Put your hands ahead. You don't get wristy. You're very firm, swinging the arms. Ball back, hands ahead, and swing the arms. But what's important, you must aim right of the hole. You will always pull this shot. Don't try to pull it, it'll naturally go to the left. Remember, use the arms and be sure to aim right of the hole. How do you play out of damp sand or wet sand? It doesn't make any difference. The fundamentals are always the same. The one biggest fault there is is because it's buried, the first thing everyone tries to do is hit it hard. That's the worst thing to do. You don't have to hit it hard because the ball is going to roll. Here's how you do it. You put the ball off your left heel. Open your stance. Put your hands straight up and down off your left leg, opening the blade. Now you want to work your feet in because you want to get your feet down to the, where the bottom of the ball is. Now, you don't want to hit down on the ball. You want to hit around the crest where the ball is in the hole. One thing you don't want to do here is don't make a long follow through. Don't try to help it. Cut your follow through short. So off the left heel, hands up off the left leg, and now just drop the club on the ball because the ball is going to roll. Remember, when you're in a buried lie, don't try to force it out. Drop the club on the ball and let the roll take care of the action. I'm a good 50, 60 yards away. I don't care how much talent you have. To explode this shot is very difficult. I recommend taking a nine or a pitching wedge and pitching the ball, not exploding. Let me show you how to do this. First, I want you to put the ball in the middle of your stance. Then you open your stance, opening your hips. Choke down on the club, putting your hands ahead. Now, here's the secret. You open the toe of the club. This is a nine iron or a pitching wedge. Doesn't make any difference. Open the toe of the club. And when you swing through now, you close the toe down over the ball, trapping the ball. This lets you hit the ball first. Because if you hit with the heel, you're going to get caught and hit it fat and stay in the bunker. Middle of the stance, choking down, 
open the face, and now just close it down on the ball. So remember, if you have a long bunker shot, don't always reach for the sand wedge. Take a nine or a pitching wedge and make a short pitch out of it, picking the ball clean. One of the most difficult shots in the game is the long bunker shot, even for the pros. But when you walk into a bunker, don't always pull that sand wedge out. Survey the situation. I'm at least 150 feet from the hole but I have a good lie. I'm not gonna take a sandwich. I'm gonna take an eight iron and chip it. I'll show you how to do that. Put the ball in the middle of your stance. Let your arms hang like in a V. Put your hands a little bit ahead. What you wanna do now is not have any tension in your shoulders to try to help the ball. You want your shoulders and arms to swing with no wrist break. And keep this as calm as you can without making a lot of motion. So get it in the V. Now just swing the club with the arms and shoulders. It takes practice, but it's best to try to catch it a little thin. You're better thin than thick. Not everybody can have caddies like they do here at the World Series. And sometimes you're going to come up to a bunker and find somebody didn't rake their footprints, just neglected and walked out. Don't get panicked, though. It's no different than a buried lie. What you must remember two things. The ball is going to come out faster, and the ball will run. The depth that I go down to the ball depends on how deep the footprint is. I'm down about that deep, so I have to come under the ball just that much. I have to hit about two inches behind the ball, making sure I get under the ball. So take your normal stance, play it as a buried lie, and it'll come out fast. <laughs> Remember, it'll come out like a buried lie, it'll roll, and don't forget to play the break, it may go in. <laughs> Here's a scary shot. The waste bunker. I have 100 yards of sand to go over before I get to the green. One thing about a waste bunker, though, is that you can ground your club. You can't do that in a sand bunker. And how you play the shot? You put the ball back in your stance, hands ahead, and take the club a little bit on the inside. You're almost trying to hook the ball. But the key to this shot is the right shoulder. You don't want to get it up. You want to get it back, and you want to get it low. Watch my right shoulder. It stays down and under through the whole shot. Remember, it's the right shoulder, back and under. You come up and find your ball in a fairway bunker and you're faced with a situation like this. Don't let the water intimidate you. This shot has to be played one way, whether there's water there or not. What you want to do is plant yourself firmly in the sand. Because you plant yourself firmly, you have to choke down on the club a little bit because the ball's above your feet. Flex your knees and put your hands ahead. What you want to do now is minimize the lower part of the body. You don't want your body to move, so your feet are moving. This is done with swinging the arms and the shoulders. Plant your feet, choke down, and pick the ball off. You don't want to get fancy with this shot. You just want to minimize the lower part of the body and swing the club with the arms and shoulders. In a playoff at the Bing Crosby, Hale Aaron showed us one of the greatest golf shots I have ever seen. The 16th hole, he drove his ball only 180 yards into the bunker. He drove it right here. 
But let's get one thing straight. He was in the bunker, but he had a perfect lie. 213 yards to the hole. Took a two iron. Took it back in one piece, shoulders, hands, and club head, and very quiet in the legs. Watch how he plants himself. No motion at the lower body. Hitting the golf ball first. Picking it off the sand. Takes it in from right to left. Lands on the green. And the rest was just history. I have learned many years ago that I have control of the tips. If I don't like what the shot is, I'll say, let's do it over. But here's an experience. One year I was doing a bunker shot at Pebble Beach. I was at the 17th hole. And I hit the bunker shot and I sculled it right over the green. And I said, well, sometimes you'll scull it right over the green. Well, the director says, we'll use that. I said, you can't use that. I sculled it over the green. He says, no, we're going to use it. We're going to show that you are that you do miss shots. And I said, no, come on, give me a chance. No, we're going to use it. Well, he used it. Well, about four or five months went by, and I was live where I live on Marco Island, and I was going by the, this bunker on one of the holes, and the fellow was in there hitting a bunker shot. And he turned, gave me a couple looks, and it was me. I said, go, go right ahead and hit the shot. Don't worry about me. So he got right in there, hit the shot, and sculled it right over the green. Turned back to me and said, been watching your tips. <laughs> I would suggest the best way to deal with bunkers is to stay out of them, but that's having fundamentals and being able to miss the bunkers. But I believe this about fundamentals, is that when I have time off and I don't play, as many years as I played, when I first go out to practice, I start with fundamentals. I start to visualize where I want my hands, where I want them to go, how I want them to finish. I deal with fundamentals all the time. The two most important things that I deal with are body position and alignment and they have to be checked all the time and that's important. I'm going to start the year off with the most important part of the game. Not the swing, not the balance, not position. I'm talking about the grip. If I had a youngster starting the game of golf, I would stress the importance of a good grip. It starts with the left hand. The club passes from the four fingers into the palm, and the V formed by the thumb and forefinger points over the right shoulder. The right hand is a finger grip. It's like holding a pistol. You open your hand and slide the club right in. It fits in the fingers. I use the overlapping grip, where the little finger overlaps the index finger of the left hand. Also, the V formed from the right hand points over the right shoulder, so both Vs now go over the right shoulder. Pressure in the left hand is in the three fingers, right hand, middle, two fingers. But you don't have to worry about that. Take the palm of the right hand and press it against the thumb of the left hand, and both hands will work together. Remember, both Vs go over the right shoulder. One thing's important. With a good grip, you can correct all swing flaws. But with a bad grip, you may never reach your potential. Many times shots are missed even before you hit the ball because you're going about it incorrectly. For instance, here are two lies. One, the ball is close to the ground, so you ground your club. Here the ball is sitting up very high, and if you ground your club, the ball is above the club. You have to bring the sole of the club to the base of the ball. What it amounts to is that you put the plane of the club and the base of the ball on the same line. Therefore, you're always meeting the ball the same way. So if you have the club down to the ball here when it's tight, then you adjust your position by choking down and picking the ball off with the same swing. Remember, first determine your lie and then adjust your position. You've heard me talk about many times a one-piece takeaway. In fact, I've heard a lot about it lately myself from different players. What is the one-piece takeaway and why is it so important? The one-piece takeaway means you take club head, hands, and shoulder back in one piece to waist high. It's like if you turned and wanted to shake hands with somebody, you'd put the club right there. Why it's so important is because it gets you away in one piece, all in rhythm, 
and in good position. You go club head first, you're outside. You go shoulders first, and you're inside. What you have to be able to do is go club head, hands, and shoulders to waist high. And how do you check it? It's simple. You put a ball at 90 degrees to your right, and if you do it correctly, and you take the club head, hands, and shoulders back in one piece to waist high, you could turn right around, put the club down, and hit the ball. That's nothing new. I learned that in 1949 from Olin Dutra, who won the US Open in 1934. It's always good to know the yardage to the hole, but sometimes yardage can be deceiving, such as this par three right here. I'm 185 yards from the hole. I'm 50 feet above the green. Every 20 or 25 feet, you change one club. For me, 185 yards would be a big four, maybe a three. I have a six iron, because the ball is gonna carry more because of the elevation. And you have to take that in consideration when you're playing a hole like this. It's good to know the yardage, but I would suggest one thing. If you're gonna play a hole like this in competition, I suggest you play it two or three times and then find out what club you have to use. You want a stroke saver? Hit the ball 300 yards in straight. I wish it was that easy. Unfortunately, it's not. You're gonna to have to play holes like this. The 17th hole of the Tournament Players Club in Connecticut. Water on the right, rough on the left. Distance now is not important, it's accuracy. If you go to the left in the rough, it's gonna be difficult to get it on the green. If you put it in the water on the right, you've got six looking at you. What you have to do is take a club that you're confident with, one that you can put it in the fairway, which is only 30 yards wide. I've taken a one iron, I've eliminated the driver. Because if I put it in trouble, I'm going for a high score. So take a club you have confidence with and make sure you put the ball in play first. Remember, when you start playing with your head and not your ego, you're gonna eliminate those six, sevens, and eights. If you expect to play a lot of golf, and especially tournament golf, you're gonna to have to play in days like this when it's raining, and you're gonna wind up with lies like this in the rough. You have to play this shot much different. It's not like when it's dry. It's heavy rough, and it's wet and thick. You have to create this shot by hitting it harder and taking a longer swing. Even though you have a short shot, you've gotta get the ball out of the rough. Pitching wedge, I like a sand wedge. Put your hands ahead, hold the club above the ball, and a longer swing and get the ball out of the rough. Remember, when you're in the rough, longer swing and hit it harder. I should get in the rough more often. Sometimes we don't have a choice. We have to play in the rain. But there are three things that are important when you play in the rain. You gotta keep your hands dry, your grip dry, and the club face dry. Most people make the mistake of keeping themselves dry and forget about their equipment. They get over the ball, their hands are dry, their grips are dry, and now they take a little practice swing. And you know what they forget to do? They forget to clean the face off. They've got grass and water in the grooves, which causes the ball to waver. So right away, what you do is you reach for a towel, clean off the face, and then go about your business, and you hit the ball. So remember, the least important person when you're playing golf is you. The most important is your equipment.
There's been a lot of conversation about the change of equipment and golf ball. There's been a big change in the golf ball. The average player or the amateur is now going to the solid ball. He can get more distance with the irons. But one thing he pays the penalty on, he doesn't get the bite around the green. The solid ball will run more. He can't put the bite on it, like going over bunkers. He has to give himself more room. I got a ballada ball and I got a solid ball. With the ballada ball, I can put some spin on the ball, checking down into it and making the ball bite a little bit more. It keeps checking going up at the hole. And if I use the solid ball, I've got to give it more loft and plan on the ball running. So remember, you play the ballada ball, it's going to bite. You play the solid ball, you've got to plan on the ball running. Every golfer wants length off the tee and be able to put spin on the ball. They both have two things in common. One, you have to delay the hit and you have to accelerate through the ball. The key to putting spin on the ball is the right knee and right hand. They work together, like so. If everybody tries to accelerate, they throw the club or they'll break down. That doesn't give you spin. It's delaying the hit through the ball. Put your hands ahead. Remember, the faster you work the right knee and the right hand, the more spin you'll put on the ball. How do you play a bunker shot when you're in the back of the bunker and on a downhill lie? Well, here's how we play the shot. This is the stroke saver in the shot, breaking the wrist up very quickly. Most of the time in a regular bunker shot, you play just off your left heel, shaft straight up and down, slipping the club under the ball onto the target. Well, here you have to improvise, use your imagination. You widen your stance. You take your right knee and you point it in. Now, instead of your hands being straight, they're forward. Now, you want to break up so you miss the lip or the sand very fast. Now, instead of going on line, I cut right across the ball, coming down the line and under the ball. Right knee in, hands forward, and break up quickly. Remember, when you're in the back of the bunker, put your shoulders down, bring your right knee in, and break up very quick. A good golf swing requires a nice long follow through, but this is an exception to the rule. A short bunker shot where you have to stop the ball, the green is fast, it runs away from you, a very difficult shot. The common fault is trying to dig it out, trying to hit behind the ball. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do now is you want to slip the club under the ball. Very little body motion, not much motion in here. And this is like a masse in pool. You want to stop the club fast. The shorter the follow through, the faster you stop it, the more you can make the ball check. So. Don't dig, slip it under, and stop the club fast. Remember, don't dig and a short follow through. I believe the most important thing about being a good player is how hard and how much you want to work at and practice. But you've got to practice the fundamentals. You just can't go out and hit a golf ball. You can't work on hitting the ball. You must work on making a swing, executing the shot, and trusting it. And let me tell you about practicing. When I was a young man, I carried two statements by Ben Hogan in my wallet. I don't have many more, but I never forgot them. One statement. There isn't enough daylight in any one day to practice all the shots you need to. And the second one was, Every day you miss practicing will take you one day longer to be good. Think about that. <laughs>